Coming up, we are changing uh, uh, perspective a bit, but not totally. It's still about how people's opinions and behavior uh, can be affected. It's a sort of nudging, you could say. So I say uh, welcome to Janne, who represents uh, Facebook, and you are the head of public policy in Sweden and Finland. Thanks a lot. Nice to be here. Quite busy times at Facebook nowadays, huh? Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> Apparently, we had some severe incidents um, just recently. So, no. but you're all fine. <laughs> We're all good. We're all good. I think it's uh, more or less fixed. Uh, the most recent ones now. Yes, and you are here because we want to talk about uh, res um, uh, responsibility, sustainability, and also how to act within regulated markets. Um, and I know that you've been with Facebook uh, in the company for five years now. When did actually the organization understand that you're not only a tech company, but you also affect the society in many, many ways? Yeah, look, I think that's a, that's a great question. And I think it's obviously it's been a, a really long journey, I think, from probably even from the start of the company. But it has taken time. And I think I've seen during the last five years I've been with the company, how that's really accelerated and really going from... I think some, some, there's been a few big moments, of course, but when it comes to one particular area, when it comes to elections, for instance, uh, the U.S. presidential election in 2016 was a pivotal moment for the company where we really came to recognize that our impact as a tech company, as we really identified ourselves back then, goes so much broader than we thought um, in the past. Some of these issues and responsibilities and sustainable issues we've dealt with was on the agenda before that. But that's one example uh, where we saw how the company really started to recognize there are more impact from our products and services in society than we intended it to be, uh, and sometimes way far-reaching, more far-reaching, uh, which we need to take responsibility mm. for. But you started something that's called an oversight board uh, containing politicians, journalists, uh, NGOs from human rights organizations, etc. What made face up, uh, Facebook come up with this uh, idea? Yeah, I think that's one of the efforts we've paid. Uh, so backing up slightly, I mean, one of the areas that we've struggled a lot with is obviously what kind of content should be allowed on a platform mm. with three billion people uh, and what should be forbidden. What should we take down as part of our responsibility to our community, our users and society more broadly? Um, and, and in that work, it is a tremendously challenging work if you're a global platform because the view of what's okay and not okay differ from places to places, country to country, culture to culture, of course. So there's no easy, coherent, black or white answer to this is the right way to do it, that the wrong way to do it. Um, so you need to find middle ground, you need to compromise, uh, and lots of the issues we've learned as we go, they weren't on the agenda before, we, we had to face them the first time. The oversight board is an effort to try to involve a broader, involve society more in those decisions of what should be allowed to say and do on Facebook or other, other platforms and what shouldn't. So it constitutes a number of independent experts. We try to form it as far away from Facebook as possible, as independent as possible from Facebook. Uh, and their input and their guidance on certain decisions we've already taken, they can overturn a decision we've taken and we've, abided, and we've said we're going to go with their um, decision and then we're going to also take input from them on how to form our rules and guidelines going forward. But how is it possible to s sort of discuss all the data that comes in? Uh, I can't even pronounce the, the, the figure, I, I assume. Yeah. Uh, the time. Yeah, yeah, no, obviously it's an enormous challenge to, to, to handle all of this and we rely heavily on making sure that we've got digital tools to help us assist in this process. And when it comes to an, an entity like the Oversight Board, that's a form of way of appealing. Once you've gone through the processes we have already at Facebook for our users, we allow them to take that further. If they're not happy with the decisions we've taken, they can appeal that to the oversight board and use that as a as another instance of. Uh, so the complaint. oversight board is sort of high, high, uh, high, högsta um, domstol, high, what Supreme heter? Court. Supreme <laughs> Court, yes. Yeah, well, um, I mean, would you call it that? The judicial Supreme Court? Yeah, well, it's not a judicial system, but but the, we, there are aspects of it that would, would be similar to, to that. It, it is somewhere for people to turn when they feel that 
they've uh, extinguished all the opportunities in talking to directly to us, mm. and then we one offer another way. Mm. But isn't it somewhat dangerous or provocative to uh, uh, create um, obstacles to people who want to communicate certain messages? Is it a danger in that as well? Oh yeah, I mean, and th th it comes back to the extreme challenges, of course, of managing content online and um, and what's expected of you, which is one day going to be um, from one party they expect you to to act that way, and then the next day another party on the same issue expect you to act the completely different way. Uh, and obviously, we manage content from. Um, uh, elected uh, politicians mm. and, and governments on the platform. So it, it is uh, tremendously challenging. You can certainly. always turn them off. Well, I, I mean, it's a <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I guess it's a possibility in most cases, but, but that's not obviously with, a, with, a, with the politicians elected by the, in a fair uh, d democracy. That's, that's not an easy choice at mm. all. That's it. I, I'm still wondering how has Facebook adapted to stricter uh, regulations and increased outside pressure? I mean, I, I, I hear what yeah. you say, but more concrete, how have you been working with this? Yeah, yeah, no, I think that we've seen how internet more broadly has been uh, the regulation around it. Th there's regulation in place in society that, that applies to internet sort of offline and online society. So there's lots of regulation that apply already, but there's some areas that we haven't had regulation for, for some time that's sort of applicable fully to, to an online world. We've been at least sort of turning a little bit in our attitude to regulation uh, in the recent year, where we've, in some areas, recognized that regulation is really uh, desired, needed, because some, some of these issues are just shouldn't be a private company deciding on that. We want politicians and elected people to come in and take the decision. In some areas, it's just unclear, which makes it very difficult to, to know what um, the right way to go is. And what is, it a bit of tr is it a bit of try and error? Yeah, definitely. Definitely when you don't have those clear guidelines, obviously you need to try to come up with it yourself. And in some cases, that's just uh, uh, more, more work and more problems. And it would be easier if, if someone sort of made that clear, because it is quite clear in many of these areas that society holds a lot of expectations on you mm. uh, to, to act. Um, what's not as clear is how you should act. Mm. And then if you have those guidelines in form of regulation, sometimes that gives you a little bit of clarence and then you know, okay, let's go this way. So you uh, uh, welcome uh, regulations, but you want clarity on it. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's not a blanket saying that all regulation is better. Obviously, we've seen regulation that is problematic and costs problems that are unintended even by the regulators. So I think for it to become right, you need to be really engaged in the dialogue together with the regulators. Identify those areas where you think, here's what an area where we can expect regulation down the line and start being transparent. Came back several times in the other discussion, mm. the importance of transparency, which I fully back uh, as well. Even though it's not as easy as just being transparent in a meaningful way, sometimes it's difficult. But, mm. but overall, more transparency helps. And then be part of that dialogue that's going to lead up to regulation that is helpful rather than harmful for, mm. for your business, of course. Uh, in the panel, we also discuss collaboration. Yeah. And um, how willing are other big tech companies to collaborate with you? Uh, are all willing as you are, or, or, or are there differences? Uh, no, I think it's fairly... Or so are you willing? I don't <laughs> know even. Yeah, no, I, I think there are, there are a number of, in our industry, there are a number of um, collaborations going on. That's been really constructive. Some of them have been... Um, initiate but industry itself. So we've got ongoing work when it comes to, as an example, data transfer, making it easier for users to move between platforms, move the data between platforms. Um, some of them are initiated by regulators. So there are a number of different ones going on together with the European Commission, where we sit down with other companies and share experience, sometimes even build technology together to address some of the challenges. So I do think there are, there's a strong willingness to, to collaborate, obviously, when it comes to addressing certain challenges. Um, and then, of course, th there's a competitive environment, so we're still, uh, in some cases, we're competitors, and that needs to stay that way, of mm. course. So, And of course, you have questions from the audience. The ah, uh, nice. first one is, from your point of view, where does the line go when it comes to 
where do you draw the line? I think the the yep. the person uh, when it comes to the responsibility from the operator. Yeah, look, I think that, that there's not one single line to say this is this is the responsibility that goes that could be applicable for all kinds of situations and types of content. It's going to differ a little bit. In some areas, the type of, of, for us, the responsibility when it comes to con managing content, I mean, that's just one example, it's very clear that content is illegal, so the responsibility is quite clear that this shouldn't be in any form or way on our platform. Others, it's not regulated, so it's up to us to say, okay, let's t take this responsibility. So I, I think it's really tough to, uh, and then, of course, you don't just have content, you have a number of other issues as well, to say this is the line and this is how much responsibility you take. I think that's a line that you need to try to figure out together, again, by being transparent, engage in dialogue with society and mm. relevant stakeholders, experts, and figure out sort of this seems to be a reasonable uh, stance to take from the company. Okay, final one. I think this one is uh, quite important. It was asked to the CEO panel as well. Being perhaps the quintessential example of the internet economy, how far would you say social media companies have come in terms of operating and understanding locally regulated markets from zero to ten? <laughs> well, that's... Uh, for <laughs> How far has social media come in general? It's still a very young phenomenon. Uh, the whole internet is young. So I think it'd be uh, a bit too bold to say that we've come a far away. I still think we're, 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 we're now facing a number of new proposals uh, that has been initiated for that will impact us and the European level that we're working in, um, hopefully in dialogue with the regulators. So yeah, tough to put a number, but I'd say still, Best case, mid mid scale. Um, five. Yeah. Okay, uh, five. Uh, still have some. Let's fun settle way for to five. Go. Yeah. Uh, final question, uh, Janne. Um, what are your main advices to companies and, and industries going through the same journey as you on Facebook, uh, briefly, especially for the gambling industry in particular? Yeah. No, I think that we started on uh, this recognition that your products and services can have a broader impact that you never intended for them to have. And some, some of that impact can be undecided by society. You need to be proactive and recognize that and sort of get out, sometimes reassess your view of yourself and, and that impact on society. It's certainly been valuable for us. I think that's important to everyone. Um, I think the other, when I come back, I'm not much of an advice because obviously it's widely recognized in this space already or in this uh, event already, but the transparency issue. Making sure you're sort of be open, be part of dialogue with society, uh, to, be, to be able to recognize those challenges you've got ahead, you need to be listening to people uh, and to, to do that, uh, be open and, and start talking to people. Mm -hmm. I think that's also a learning that we've had uh, accelerated for us the last few years. Thank you very much for that, Janne. Head of Public Policy in Sweden and Finland. Thank you very much Thanks and welcome back if Great needed. Conversation. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.